Now, entrepreneurs boost economic growth by introducing innovative technologies, products, and services. Increased competition from entrepreneurs challenges existing firms to become more competitive. Today, we talk about impacting entrepreneurs in Africa and with a focus here in Kenya. Talking marketers impacting, these are entrepreneurs who are employers or providing a solution to a certain economic gap in the market. Well, to help us uh, carry on this conversation, we're joined by David Tiboriot, who is the East Africa Manager and e for impact Foundation. David, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Well, I hope I got your name right. You did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a conversation this morning on exactly how I was going to get it. But let's get part, um, let's get into that conversation. Now, you work with um, e for impact entrepreneurs, but let's define this clearly. Who is e for impact entrepreneur? And also expound more on what the e for impact does. Very good. And, and thanks for because this good question. Actually, to, to unpack what an impact entrepreneur is. So an impact entrepreneur is an entrepreneur who is charged with a mission, who wants to transform the world through, with his enterprise. And we say impact because we're looking at three components that this entrepreneur wants to achieve. The first is the uh, um, financial impact, social impact, and environmental impact. Actually, we speak about the triple bottom line. And so when this impact entrepreneur is beginning his enterprise or a startup, he has in mind this mission to have a triple bottom line in, in, in his business. So this is what an impact entrepreneur is. And I think the term has been used because they're also impact investors who have come up to actually look forward to investing in impact entrepreneurs. So an impact entrepreneur must demonstrate the impact and so it's this triple bottom line that they must demonstrate to an impact entrepreneur. And they need to generate uh, the revenue while having an impact, social and environmental impact. Yes. Yes. And then e for impact Foundation, the, the organization that I work for, actually stands for Entrepreneurship for Impact. So e for impact Entrepreneurship for Impact. We are a spin-off of the business school of the Catholic University of Milan. And we work in Africa, presently in 20 African countries. Now, somebody's going to ask you, with over 10 years' experience, really working with the businesses in Africa, how do you go about converting just a business to fit onto these three areas of impact that you're driving for? Great question, Roger. So I think the most important thing when you are working with entrepreneurs is the journey that you make with them. Yes. The most important thing is really, and that journey is a pedagogical journey, and really understanding how to create or make an impact entrepreneur. And so in the capacity building of entrepreneurs, there are two important components that one has to bear in mind. There is the science part of learning about the notions of entrepreneurship, so what is, what is strategy, what is a business model, what is a financial model? And then there is the art side, the artistic side of acting or being an entrepreneur. So most of the training programs only train on the science. So create a balance sheet, um, understand about break even, but they don't model on how someone can be. And the best way of modeling on success is to have a lot of interaction between successful entrepreneurs and the upcoming entrepreneurs. Yes, Dave, let me, let me ask you this question as well. Is somebody going to ask you, well, are yes. these three areas, the financial impact, the social impact, environmental impact, are yes. they attained on a graduated level that are going to start any business and hopefully as it grows bigger and bigger, I stand yes. on these three areas or that is something that you got to think about on the onset of starting any business? Great. You have to think about impact from the onset. You have to be sort of mission driven, actually. And so when, if you're an impact entrepreneur, and because there, there are, let's say, two main categories of, of enterprises. Yes. One that is charged to mission and one that has a profit orientation. 
So if you're mission or impact oriented, then you think about impact from the onset. And whatever you do, as you create your business model, you're thinking about your financial sustainability, your social sustainability, and your environmental sustainability from the onset. So you build and you keep moving from one phase to another. It doesn't become an add-on. So you've seen, let's say, big successful corporates when they made so much money and then they start doing sort of social corporate responsibility on the side. So they never had impact from the beginning. Yes. They were oriented to profit or, sh or maximizing sh shareholders' um, revenue. But I think if, if you're thinking about impact, it, it's something that you have to think from the beginning and you start growing your enterprise with all the three things together. So you work on your three feet. And these are the three feet that you're using if you're an impact entrepreneur. So I, I you know, proceed. Yes. Um, that's, I'm going to ask you this, Dave. I mean, because we do know that this gent was saying that the businesses that are actually surviving uh, or the new businesses that are actually are creating ways in this century are social impact businesses. Fine, can you talk to me about that? And is it a summary of whatever it is that we're talking about here? Financial impact, social and environmental impact. Is that what is generalized as social impact businesses? Yes, I, I totally agree with you. So the impact businesses are the, imp are the businesses that have three, these, these three components. Yes. And have a triple bottom line in the way of operating. Actually, we speak about the three Ps. That, that drive these businesses. People profit in planet. So they care about the people, they care about the profit, and they care about the planet. And this is the, the key definition of what an impact enterprise then is. Pretty much, Dev, as we talk about this, um, they also say that, well, if we're gonna talk about impact, then any business that you come up with has to solve a problem that is existing now in your environment. Can you confirm that that is also the only business model that would work for anybody wanting to start out and have this sort of impact that we're talking about? I can confirm. And I can also say a bit more, and, and even looking at our Kenyan environment. Yes. I think we are not short of opportunities to have impact enterprises. Most of our youth, people who want to start businesses, are actually coming from societies um, that are deprived of Many, 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 many things. There's so many social challenges. Yes. They, there are environmental issues, pollution, and so on. And so, when these people realize that they have a social problem that they're charged with, you grow up, you're lacking something, and you start thinking in an entrepreneurial way. What if I have a solution for this social problem within the community? The moment you think about that, because then social enterprise is coming to fill gaps where the national the mainstream businesses or even national governments are not responding to. If you're from the slum and there's so much waste around you and it's an ISO and you think, what can I do? Can I create um, a waste management company? Can I collect this waste and turn it into something? You know, someone says um, waste or garbage into cash and we've worked with enterprises like that. So in this sort of orientation where you want to create a change, solve a problem now, in your own community, whether it's a social problem, whether it's an environmental problem, then you're already geared to being an impact enterprise. Well, Dave, it's important, therefore, let's marry this uh, conversation with exactly what goes on locally here. We, we do know data indicates that 90% of the businesses that actually start never get to see the second birthdays in the country. Having interacted with majority of these businesses, and we do know the informal sector also contributes 80% of the employment that exists at any time within our economy. Would you say that it's the failure of businesses to understand these three areas, financial impact, social impact, and environmental impact, that leads to their failure? I can say that, and I can even say more. Yes. And I can even tell you, like, almost three or four reasons why mostly the startups fail. And, 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 and confirm statistics, why 90% of them don't see their, their second birthday. So the, one of the greatest problems that, that our startups feel, as in our encounter, is actually trying to, to, to build something no one wants. So you, 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 you come up with an idea in your head, 
and you think that everyone will fall in love with your idea, but you are not interacting with the market. You're not interacting with your potential customers. You want to solve a social problem and an environmental problem, but you haven't thought about it from a sustainability perspective. It's just I'm, I'm falling in love with this idea. And you invest a lot of time, a lot of resources, and when you take it to market, it's not what the market wanted. So you could have been doing something great, or you had great intentions of actually having an impactful business. But if you don't engage with the market side of that business, whether it is a social, solving a social problem, an environmental problem, then you, you're totally off. So this is one fundamental reason. The other one is not really figuring out the sustainability of the model. So you have a very nice value proposition. You want to solve a social problem. Yes. Sometimes you've not figured out the market. Sometimes you've not figured out your revenue streams. And so you start operating and, and no money is coming in. So you, 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 your model is not coherent in itself. And, and you've already launched. Yes. Yeah. Is it, is it a challenge, Dave, therefore, as we are talking about uh, businesses understanding the three elements of impact, is it complex for any business to understand how they can marry this three together into their business? Sometimes it's complex. And when you find businesses that just have an, a thinking in their head, they want to change the world. Yes. And, and, and I think I want to solve this social problem. But they don't consider all, all the elements. Because even as you change the world, you need to be generating revenue. You cannot just change the world just with good ideas or good intentions. They're not enough. So you, you, you have to think about your financial model, your you If you're going to look for funding, who is it that will invest in you? So all these are, are nuances that then an, an impact entrepreneur with these three components have to, has to bear in mind, not just be oriented towards a, a certain bottom line, just social or environmental, but you have to think about the, the connection and the sustainability of the three components. I'm going to ask you this question as well when it comes to culture and the, and the environment for business. That would you say that, well, the, the, the different areas would have different cultures and businesses will sort of marry into that culture? And is that why you would probably say, well, that some businesses and some areas are struggling to marry this or, sorry, these three areas of impact that we're talking about this morning, and some would find it easy because of the culture and the environment of, uh, of oppression. And I'll ask you, therefore, how Kenya compares with the other countries that you are in as well. Sure. I, I think culture is, 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 um, is very important. Because we can speak also whether in enterprises, whether you're born an enterprise, could be... I think the sign that you can you you can become an entrepreneur, and in this way, culture plays a very important role. Yes. So becoming one and on, or not just being born has an element about your your well-being, your upbringing, and the environment about you. So if the environment about you is business-oriented, think about the Indians, for instance. The 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 born the the father run. Um, a business when you're young you start running that business you start interacting with the, with the market and so on and and the product and sourcing and all these things so you you're already in a culture that propels you to become an entrepreneur while our culture sometimes also is a very social culture where even if you if you're running a business and someone comes and visits you you give them some gifts and you don't record that that these are expenses of the business and stuff like that and it's like the community expects you to do that and so if you don't, you know, draw your box and say, I'm actually running a business that needs to succeed, and you sort of concede or see to the culture, I need to please others. Uh, the community expects me to just hand over my, my things to them because it is our culture to give. It, it doesn't help you much. In a positive sense, though, culture as a social culture is, you can use it as a, as a good social wealth. So maybe with crowdfunding, you know, you've seen the, the crowdfunding that are coming up nowadays where you have some sort of chamas, and some of these chamas are actually starting to collect funds to put into a startup. So this is a positive use of the culture. But in the past, I think our culture was really negating all the efforts that our entrepreneurs were getting into.
Yeah. Jeff, let's complete this conversation this morning like this. You mentioned something very important when we're starting this conversation, the journey that you will take a business through to actually identify and fall on all these impacts that we're talking about this morning. Could you briefly talk to me about that? That should you take over business? Can you talk to me about this journey? What should a business expect from you? All right, great. So what a business can expect from us in, in the entrepreneurial journey is the, the, the whole aspect about handholding. Because as a startup, as a, as a business, you, you're starting out, you have so many ideas, you don't know about profitability, margins, and things like that. They have, in, in our program, we have a very action-oriented training. So you, you and, and with tools and, um, and business assignments that you do. So there's very good training by qualified trainers. There are coaches and mentors. And, and here, we just make, want to make a distinction between a coach and a mentor. So you have a coach who knows a lot of so many things about the parts of how a, a business succeeds all the model and the three triple bottom line and stuff. And then you need a mentor who is a sector expert. So if you're getting into the business or renewable energy or waste management, you need then someone who before has you. And, and so having a mentor is, is good. Having all you call together, they could be from the trainers, the mentors, the industry players, who gives you advice and acts as a resounding body is, is critical. So we help our companies as well create good teams, and you need to have a complementary team that is critical for, for success. We help you identify the, the team members that you need and gaps that you have. Creating a good model, how to fundraise is a very critical component because as you, as you start up, you might not have loan funds alone. And sometimes you need external funding to be able to scale. So all these are the critical parts that we provide to an enterprise. And at the end of the day, in six months, one year, that business has actually been capacity built and supported to actually launch into the market and, and have some success. Pretty much, David Chebobriot, East Africa Manager for Eve for Impact Foundation. Thank you very much for taking your time to speak to Metropole's Business M this morning, sir. You're welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have been here. All right, on that, note, on that yeah. note, we take a short break here on a business. And once we come back, the economic review, top on that, what is our debt seller once we come back? <laughs>